Good morning and welcome to the Blue Earth County Board of Commissioners meeting of September 27th, 2022. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. the uh, agenda review. Well, Mr. Chair, there are no changes to the agenda today. Move to approve. Yep, I need to approve. Approve. A second. A second. Uh, okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Who's curious? All right, here we have the Sheriff's Office and Mr. Paul Bart. Uh, several different items. And I'll start out at uh, first time. You can item join us up here if you want, yeah. Paul. Yeah, yes. here, come on up. Come on up. Uh, up here. Um, first item agenda is the public hearing regarding the Blue Earth County Sheriff's Office uh, body worn camera policy. And this is a public hearing. So public comments will be allowed in just a moment. At this time, I'll just ask Captain Barta to please introduce the item before the board. Uh, good morning, board. Good morning. I appreciate the opportunity to meet with all of you again. Um, give you a real brief, uh, I guess, overview on what we're looking at, the project scope, and uh, where we're uh, looking at coming in financially on the project. Um, the uh, body-worn camera project was, uh, was uh, researched pretty extensively. We put a work group together that consisted of uh, several different individuals from the patrol setting, uh, IT. Um, I was uh, part of it uh, when I was able to make some of the meetings. We basically looked at the top. Uh, contenders that we felt were in the market, um, including Motorola, which is uh, WatchGuard, Axon, which was formerly known as Taser, and GTEC. Those were uh, the top three candidates <coughs> after research that we wanted to look at. We met with the vendors, and uh, and we ultimately did a demo, or took the uh, the uh, camera hardware uh, in on site and tested it in controlled circumstances. Um, we tested Motorola and Axon. And ultimately, uh, the work group decided that Motorola was their preferred option. Um, they said that it integrated with the existing squad camera system that we have. Uh, the video itself was more similar to what the naked eye would see and uh, would, uh, would lend itself to what, what really was happening at the time when, when the video footage was taken. There was flat rate pricing, which was a little bit more um, uh, easy to understand and apply to our situation uh, than its competitor. And we have local representation, so if we have issues with the product, we have a local connection here to be able to go back to them. Uh, real quick breakdown on the numbers, we're looking at about 31 devices to get the project off the ground. That's gonna accommodate 22 patrol staff or deputies and uh, lieutenants, uh, three investigators, three for the drug task force, and then we wanna maintain three spares that could also be rotated through for administrative use. For instance, if I was gonna go into a situation would be advantageous for me to have, I'd be able to grab one of those spares. Uh, real quick discussion on the, uh, the budget. Um, when I initially looked at this project and got some rough numbers uh, a year or two ago, uh, we had budgeted $100,000 and looked at with most of these, uh, this type of technology, oftentimes it's a lease style agreement. Uh, we did budget out for 100,022, maintenance cost for 23 and 24, and then in 2025 had 50,000 budgeted. Uh, knowing we were going to have some integration enhancement requirements to uh, keep it going with our existing squad camera system. And real quick, remember that the squads have uh, video cameras in them, and the ideal circumstance is that the body-worn camera links with that video um, so that it, it, uh, it's a seamless integration and they work together. You're not dealing with two separate systems, if you will. Um, so for the board's consideration, our uh, total amount that we were actually looking at upon implementa implementation went to $132,393. And again, I would uh, be looking at the budget coming up in 2025 to make maybe some correction of that $50,000 uh, uh, because I don't know that it's necessarily going to be needed. Um, but that's going to get the, the project up and off the ground and run it basically at a maintenance style agreement for about five years. So. Uh, total cost is a little more than what we budgeted for, but uh, that's the reason. Um, any questions on, I guess, the overview before I move to the policy piece of it? When would it start? Uh, good question, Commissioner. We're looking at and uh, talking with uh, with Motorola. One thing that they're seeing, of course, is uh, 
is delays in uh, product availability. And uh, we're hoping that we can get the product and we think we can get the product according to them in 2022 yet. Uh, we wanna make payment obviously in 2022. Implementation time, I think conservatively, we'd be probably looking at January, uh, hopefully, or, or an optimistic would be would be December, but I think we're gonna see the beginning of 2023 to get it up and running. Thank you. Um, public hearing. Yeah, anything else? Uh, it's a public hearing, so. Mm -hmm. Kevin had a question. Yeah, another one. I guess also based on when, when we start, we would not start it until we have a complete system, correct? Correct, yeah. Once so everybody would be it would all be ready to go before we started correct yeah we would have the, the uh, as defined in policy yep. all of the equipment on hand uh, incidentally to the uh, the provider the vendor in this case comes uh, leave on site and does training if not on site they do it remote so there's a training component to go along with this that has to be conducted for all the staff and there's there's uh, IT related uh, uh, component too to make sure that we've got all the integration it's cloud-based uh, but there's that evidence uh, component of it so that it's stored and the files can be exchanged for uh, prosecution and uh, um, for other law enforcement agencies and things. So there's a little bit behind the scene works that work that needs to go on as well. Any other questions of Paul at this point? Okay. Uh, thank you, Captain Barta. Go ahead that. At this time, we will open a hearing for public comment. Those individuals wishing to be make a comment may do so at this time. Uh, just come, please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record and please limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, we have to go through this. Okay. Uh, is there anyone else wishing to make comments on the Sheriff's Office body warrant camera policy? Uh, please come forward and state your name and address. Um, uh, again, at uh, last time for anyone wishing to make comments on the Sheriff's Office body warrant cameras policy. Please come forward. Uh, okay, I guess hearing no further comments, I will close the public comment portion of the hearing and state statute requires a comment period, but no board action is required at this point. Um, all right. Okay. And, and if second, uh, second item. Um, yeah, and if I could yeah. real quick, okay. uh, Chair, I would just like to pass along that um, I will be having a conversation at the conclusion of, of this meeting to let the uh, vendor know that we intend to proceed with the uh, purchase, and, and following that, then they will send an invoice that uh, will probably come to uh, County Administrator and yourself for review and possible signature okay. electronically. Okay, thank you, Paul. Um, I would move the Motorola Solutions quote. I would second that. I move and second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Right. Carries. All right. Um, at this time, uh, we have a. Uh, well, we have a grant. Yeah. Grant authorization. Any board. Yeah. Board discussion yet? Uh, okay. Right. And we're moving on to the next item then. Yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, I think Chair, uh, you're referring to the resolution yeah. for the TZD, the Towards Zero Correct. Death uh, mm -hmm. DWI officer. Um, mm -hmm. Resolution and for the board's consideration, this is a standard agreement that has been in place for several years, uh, specifically with TZD, that initiative to provide additional traffic enforcement um, on our on our roadways. And this specifically also applies to the DWI officer position, which allows us to keep uh, somebody out there enforcing uh, DWI laws for the traffic uh, traffic enforcement piece. We've used it uh, over the last several years, and we, we use the money to backfill. Uh, the staffing position that uh, somebody vacates when they go into the enforcement component. Thank you for that. Are there any other comments from the board? No. Nope. Okay, we'll do um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, continue with the resolution. Yeah. Second. And second. Move and second to continue the resolution. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed carries. Cats, that's uh, all we that's got it. Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Good report. Marta for presenting today. Thank you. And thank now, you, sir. Thank you. We'll now move on to planning and zoning. And uh, all right. Morning, Garrett. Scott. Good morning, Garrett. Good Scott. Uh, okay. We'll just uh, the next item on the agenda is planning and zoning, and planning and zoning staff are here to present. Your action items. This is a public hearing, and public comment will be allowed in just a moment. 
I'd ask the planning and zoning staff to please introduce themselves for the record and uh, introduce item to the board. Hey, thank you, commissioners. Um, my name is Gary Rolfing with Worth County Planning and Zoning with Property Environmental Resources. PC 20-22 is a request from Mitchell Frondinst and Kyle Kelly for a preliminary and final plat of the Kelly subdivision. The plat will include one lot and one outlot. The property is zoned agricultural and is located in the east half of the northwest quarter of the southwest quarter and the southwest quarter of the southwest quarter of section two Judson Township. Staff presented the report. There was no public comment. Members of the Planning Commission indicated the report was thorough and well thought out. They had no further questions or concerns. Following the discussion, the Planning Commission voted to forward a recommendation for approval of the request to the County Board based on the findings prepared by staff and with, and with conditions recommended by staff. And the Board action is the passage of the resolution based on findings and conditions recommended by the Planning Commission. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Gary. Um, at this point, is there any, anyone wishing to comment on uh, uh, PC 20-22? Again, if there's anybody wishing to comment on PC 20-22, uh, and again, we'll ask if there's anybody wishing to comment on PC 22. If not, we will close the public comment portion and bring it back to the board. I would move approval of the resolution based on the findings and conditions recommended by the Planning Commission. Second. And moved and second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed carries. All right. Um, then we have, uh, moving on. This one you're going to take, Scott, with uh, PC 21-22. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Scott Salisbury, Blue Earth County Property and Environmental Resources. The next item is PC 21-22. The applicant is the Cato Cycle Club and Minnesota Paving and Materials, and it's a conditional use permit to review and update the mining reclamation plan for the former Cedar Grove mine, which is located in the southeast quarter of Section 31, South Bend Township. The updated reclamation plan includes site grading to establish a minimum of three to one slopes and establishing vegetation with a dry prairie seed mix in the areas of the former mine that were mined after 1997. At the Planning Commission meeting, staff prepared or presented the staff report. There's no public comment on it. Uh, members of the Planning Commission indicated that the report and plans were thorough and added that it's good to see the site uh, being reclaimed. Uh, they had no further um, questions or concerns and following con discussion, the Planning Commission voted to forward a recommendation for approval of the request to the county board based on the findings prepared by staff and with the conditions recommended by staff. Um, the board action is passage of the resolution based on the findings and conditions recommended by the planning commission. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Okay, at this time, um, is there anybody wishing to comment on 21-22? Uh, please come forward to the podium and state your name and address. And if there's anybody wishing to comment on PC 21-22, please come forward to the podium. Uh, and I guess for the last time then, if there's anybody wishing to comment on PC 21-22, please come forward. Uh, and hearing none, um, we'll bring it back to the board for discussion. I would move to uh, approve the uh, resolution based on the findings and conditions. I would second moved. that. Second by Vance. Any discussion? Okay. Seems like a pretty good yeah. idea. I saw yeah, a lot of yeah. positive key, uh, yep. comments at the Planning and Zoning Board about moving this forward. Yeah, a lot of positive replanting and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it's a good thing. All right. Can we have it in front of us then? All those in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed carries. Okay. <coughs> concludes our Thank hearing. Thanks, guys. Thank you, gentlemen. We have, yes. Good, Good morning, John. John. Good morning, Commissioners. Yeah, Mr. Lake, how are you? I'm doing well. Good. Good. So, I'll introduce your item. Yes, I uh, just wanted to see which memo we had up there first. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Uh, I have two items for you today, two memos, both of which are appointments to the 
uh, Community Corrections Advisory Board. So the first one on your screen there is the appointment of <coughs> Muhammad Al Sadig. Uh, Muhammad is the Executive Director of the Greater Mankato Diversity Council. Um, <coughs> excuse me, this appointment would uh, run through the rest of the current term of appointments, which goes until 12. 31 of 2023 and would be subject to reappointment thereafter. So uh, he is a replacement. He will be a professional member uh, replacing Bukata Hayes, who had previously been on the board with us. Uh, so that is the, the first appointment. Um, and I could go right to the second one unless he had any. Well, let's go one at a time. One at a time. I would move to approve uh, Mohammed Al-Sadig to uh, the uh, Community Corrections Advisory Corrections, Board. Yeah. Uh, second. Uh, second. I'll second. Okay, Julianne, second. Okay, any discussion? I oh. know uh, no. Mohammed personally. I was when I was on the advisory board. He was on there. He was also a part-time police officer. Um, well versed, and uh, he'll do a great job with the uh, community corrections advisory board. It was great to meet him. We got to, uh, to spend some time together couple weeks ago and uh, yeah just getting into his role as executive director he had a lot to kind of get figured out and situated so we were able to finally connect and uh, he is excited to get on the board as well he's been looking forward to it so um, I'm happy to bring him on board okay, great okay thank you anybody uh, we got the motion <coughs> those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed carries all right then uh, Yes. And then my other appointment mm -hmm. uh, to the advisory board is Habiba Rashid. Uh, Habiba, uh, the same term would apply to her. Her term would expire on 12-31 of 2023 and would be subject to reappointment thereafter. Um, she's actually going to come on board as a community member. Um, Habiba is actually the Associate Director of Refugee Services for mm -hmm. the Minnesota Council of Churches. Mm -hmm. um, and so she and I had met, we had been connected. Um, she'd been recommended to me by a couple people as well as a potential candidate to join the board. and so. We were able to connect and spend some time together and, and I just you know, talked to her about what kind of role she wanted to fill as either a professional member or as a community member. Um, and so after you know talking about it, what we do with the advisory board, she thought that she wanted to come on board as a community member. Yeah. Um, so she's in Commissioner District 3 um, and she, like I said, will be um, on the board until 1231 of 2023 and be subject to reappointment thereafter but uh, really excited to bring her on board as well um, she has a lot of interest in working with our families in the community and so i think she's a perfect fit for where we want to be at with the community corrections advisory board as well that's good Any? all right thank you john okay we have okay, a motion i would move to approve it's been moved is there a second 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 okay discussion Sounds like a yeah, good choice. Fit. Absolutely. Uh, all those in favor saying by saying aye. 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 Opposed carries. Yep. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, John. Thank you. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> okay. All right. Next we have Craig and <coughs> Brian. Some drainage. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Um, first thing we have here is on Judicial Ditch 15, it's to set a hearing date. Uh, purpose, the Blue Earth County Judicial Ditch 15 is a public drainage system which is primarily located in Lincoln Township. Uh, petition to make alterations to JD 15 was received on July 26, 2022. Uh, Charles J. Brandle of ISG was asked to review the petition and to make a report. At today's meeting in the Blue Earth County Drainage Authority, we are requesting the Drainage Authority set a hearing date of October 25, 2022 at 9 a.m. in the second floor Board of Commissioner's room at the Blue Earth County Courthouse. It's, is there a, this is right at harvest time, is there a reason why we got to move this forward in October or can this get Pushed. I mean, Kevin, you getting any feedback from this particular one? I'm, I'm getting Not feedback from 86. Yeah, 86, but. I'm hearing it is, uh, you know, we, last two years we've had four rain days. Uh, we've had as many as 15 rain days back in 2016 where we couldn't harvest. So if we could pick it on a day that's raining, uh, <laughs> that would be great. Um, is, that, is that just an issue though, moving these? I mean, I know we normally try to do that before, but. We want to be timely and, yeah. and efficient. 
and get that. <coughs> but we also, I think, want to be respectful of of the busy season um, on the farm. And I don't know how big a project this one is, to be honest with you, but 86 was kind of a big project, but yeah, well, we're dealing with that. Well, so uh, is this a pretty minor? This is, have you been should in be involved? pretty minor, should be, the plans look good. Um, okay. Yeah, should, should be pretty minor. Only All affects right. like one landowner. Okay, I'm, I'm, a, I'm okay with that, but as we move forward with these bigger projects, you know, chances are we've been working on them for two years anyways. What's another month gonna matter if we get a past harvest or planting? So let's keep that in the back of our, back of our planning. Yep, and this Great. project actually is going to be a wetland restoration. Oh, it is. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. So, okay. No agricultural influence. Yeah. Okay. Don't foresee a lot of issues or. No, it just they have to reroute the line uh, to make sure that the upstream landowners are deprived of any drainage. That's that's the only thing that we're really concerned about. Okay. In that, in that, in that case, I, I would make a motion to set the date for October 25th. Kip moves to make the second. Motion. Okay, and Kevin seconds. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed carries. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I got a re repair report. Thanks, for, uh, That's right, we have that. You can wait yep. toward Yeah. You guys already preluded oh. the CD 86, or County Ditch 86. A quick repair report for that. Yep. Uh, for section 34 of Decoria Township, there's areas of multiple sloughing and outlet repairs that need to be done. I did receive a, an approximate cost estimate of 18 to 20,000 from Sowers Construction um, for the uh, dirt dirt work and outlet repairs. Move to approve. And move by Second. Kevin. Second by Vance. Um, Ryan, I'm yes, Mr. Sir. Chair. I'm mm -hmm. Do we have on here how much is in the accounts anymore? This is I don't have that. Oh, okay. No. All right. Are we okay in that account? Do you remember? Yeah, CD86 okay. is a right. good size system. All right. Yep. The only question I'll I have. Cover it. Okay. Right. All right. I can email <coughs> you at, at the book. No, that's okay. I was just curious if we had okay. enough money. All right. Any other questions? Okay, all those then in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed carries. Thank you, gang. Thank day. you. Thank you. All right. And I guess we have at this point uh, Mr. Clausen. Mr. Clausen, oh. Phil. Good morning, human, Phil. Human Services. Good morning. Chair, Commissioners, I have uh, three action items to review with the board this morning. The first of those being in the public health realm, and it is statewide health improvement partnership that I think the board is familiar with, SHIP, as it's most often referred to. Um, this is a renewal of our agreement um, SHIP supports evidence-based solutions. Uh, the areas of focus are active living, healthy eating, tobacco-free living, and general well-being across four sectors, including the community, healthcare environment, workplace, and schools. Um, we, as you are familiar, um, award many grants, which are also reviewed by the state. And the renewal amount of this grant is $208,908. I mean, $208, um, which is the same as the previous year. There is a note that we could use some of that previously for COVID and that ended um, now and so it, it's um, back to pre-COVID practices. And the term November 1st of 22 through October 31st of 23. The other two items are under financial assistance. Uh, the first of those being with AmeriCare Mo Mo Mobility Van, AMV. Um, it's a temporary funding source to provide our critical transportation services to fee-for-service clients. And these, mir these payments mirror the payments by managed care organizations. So managed care can already um, reimburse these transportation providers in this way. But for fee-for-service 
medical assistance recipients, they do not get this extra support. And, and things are, are very tight right now in the transportation world. We, our providers were really down to two outside um, providers beyond Vine. And I am very concerned that we could lose um, either one of our remaining providers. Um, we're using ARPA dollars for this to help cover lo no load miles, no shows and wait times for AMV. And we also have a, a conversation going on with um, Blue Earth Taxi, so we'll talk about that vendor in the future. Um, these are all, again, allowable reimbursements for managed care plans as we stand today. Um, the purpose is to assure the sustainability, sustainability of the provider. The amount is $33,750. Um, contract, current base contract runs January 1st, 22 through December 31st of 22. And this addendum will be from September 1, um, backdated a bit through the end of the year, December 31 of 22. And finally, our MFIP DWP contracts with uh, MRCI, a lot of acronyms. Uh, Minnesota Family Investment Program is MFIP, our base um, support um, for individuals. And under that, if people do receive um, assistance, uh, they, there are ex expectations for employment services. And there's also a, another program called Diversionary Work Program that actually comes first. So most people that apply are put on DWP and they really look for a job right out of the box and see if we can avoid them going on to the more um, extensive MFIP program. Once they're on MFIP, there continues to be employment service expectations. And um, <coughs> MRCI is our provider. It has been for many years in this regard. Uh, let's see, the funding comes from the Consolidated Grant, which is a very big grant that supplies, supplies a lot of our um, supports and the employment service carve out for 2023 is $641,830 and that's an increase of $1,600, so very small increase, 0.25% term, January 1st of 23 through December 31st of 23. And those are my action items, Mr. Chair. Uh, <coughs> questions? The, uh, I was wondering, like the mobility one, so, COVID a part of it? It's been it's been kind of a problem for a while to get uh, sure has enough been. providers for. Yeah, it, it's been a very um, much of a reality check, Mr. Mr. Chair. In that, I think the providers have both kind of gone out of that space because the margins are so small, and then what we saw during COVID, to the part of your question, people started to clamp down on how far they would transport somebody. So the Rochester Mayo visits went by the wayside, which caused a lot of hardship. <coughs> we can always, I mean, if these providers would decide that they're not gonna continue, we offer gas cards and other things, but sometimes people don't have that, they don't have family members near. So th those are the kind of headaches that we experienced, especially during COVID, to the heart of your question. And some providers just refuse to provide um, trips during those times for fear of safety about the virus. So. Okay. Anybody out? Any other question? Um, nope. All right. Um, I would move approval of the approve. action items. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the action items or second? Second. Second by Vance. Uh, okay. All right. Then all those in favor say, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed carries. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. Um, I do have some informational mm -hmm. and discussion items of focus today. Um, again, things that we've brought before the board historically. Uh, the first of those being child protection data for the past year, for 21. Um, you'll see the first pie chart um, and the breakdown of the different types of maltreatment that we, we find. Um, ne neglect being the vast majority, which these are fairly stable pictures that we see. <coughs> Um, or neglect being our number one concern, followed by f the physical abuse, sexual abuse, and then some smaller categories in mental health or threatening um, of injury. The interventions break down in kind of the square box, um, and the different types of assessment we do, our first one, family assessment, the biggest one, the, the kind of concept behind family assessment is we try to come alongside the families. It's a, it's a relationship that we're trying to build. 
and <coughs> it fits with the majority of our cases, but there are some exceptions. And so anytime uh, physical abuse or sexual abuse is, is reported, it immediately goes to that next level family investigation. So um, a little less of a mutual approach, but more of a technical look and a court involved look at what's going on in that, in that household. And then if abuse happens in a facility, that can, sometimes we will investigate depending on what facility and how they're licensed, or the state might, might also investigate those, those reports. And then you'll see the final statistic is we do a, a good job of getting out. That's an important part of our, our business um, and our reputation, our integrity for child protection staff to meet the required timelines. Um, there's quite a bit of, of room with the family assessment when something isn't urgent or emergent necessarily. Um, it's very true we don't know what we don't know, so sometimes we go in and realize it's much worse and you can move it to then the family investigation and that does happen once we find out some information. So it's not like you're locked into a certain approach. And then 24 hours if it's um, the more significant concerns and so therefore um, I think the board's aware that we have 24 hour reporting we um, you know don't shut down on the weekends staff are on call um, law enforcement's a great partner for us um, county attorney for sure so things are going well again <laughs> I think when you look back it's hard to not look through the lens of COVID and I think that shifted an awful lot of things and some of our concerns which we talked mm -hmm. about here is um, people are kind of maybe more sequestered in their house so you don't know what's going on once school starts we get a lot of <coughs> reports a lot more eyes on and for the mission that's a good thing the uh, second area is out of home placement and just to break down what types of placement in this in this um, picture that we're providing also 2021 data so um, there are some skews and effects of COVID in all of this, um, as well as, and you've heard me talk about just how hard it is to place um, children, especially children with high levels of need. Um, it's true on the adult side right now too, so we're, we're in a real um, struggle about finding beds. So I'm trying to paint a fair picture for you, but literally um, staff are calling 100 calls a day just trying to find an open bed in any state. It's really that bad. And so um, we were talking to Patty O'Connor yesterday and just telling her kind of the lay of the land of what's happening and this being a hot topic for sure. And uh, just that we've always said, you know, there's acute cases. It takes a big toll on staff and we have hard cases, hard to find the right bed. It, it feels worse than ever, I must say. It just, it seems like it's really, really a crisis. And so we're talking to the DHS about this. I'm sure we'll try to um, bring light to this through the next ledge session as well. <coughs> that's that's a problem, not just here. But Correct. Well, this is across the state. Across the absolutely. State. Yeah. The absolutely. Crisis centers across yeah. the state are just yeah. absolutely all, right. All, every county in the states. Yeah. If anything, and I, I think it's always fair to say, you know, Mankato being a hub, we have a lot more resources than some of our neighbors, and so um, yeah, it's it's a crisis throughout the state for sure. And if anything, we have at least some step downs. We have the crisis center. We have some stuff where some counties, small counties, don't have anything. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're making the same calls. When we get together as a region, that's what the directors talk about. It's just that their staff are, are you know, all day long just trying to make calls, find desperation calls, um, really willing to take any place. Because of the acute presentation, the kid's in crisis, the kid's not stable, and he's really at risk of hurting themselves or others or their behavior is out of control. It's not, you know, the usual and customary adolescent um, little blip. Um, it's not that stuff that we're talking about. So. Um, breakdown of where kids go um, in this snapshot. Uh, the first pie chart just shows um, the cause, the reason for entering care. And always that use of drugs and alcohol is the biggest category. Um, the next, which kind of fits with some of the child protection data, is abuse or neglect. Um, so we're not confident that the kids are being given enough structure to have a healthy day-to-day. -day. And then um, we go on to the behavior issues, mental health, and, um, and that, again, is a pretty stable breakdown of what we see year to year. Um, I'm going to go to placement expenditure percentage, um, the biggest category, foster care, which I always 
promote, um, and I know you do as well, that our foster care, care providers are our bread and butter. It's how we um, provide our mission. It's the core of it. And it's the vast majority of our placements, which I'm very proud of. I, I hope that would never change. Um, group homes is, is kind of the opposite story where they tend to have longer length of stays. And so we've tried to use that as minimally as possible. We do use it once in a while and when somebody needs a longer term placement in the family situation does not look like it's gonna improve, a group home might be warranted. Um, but <coughs> followed by residential treatment and then correction facilities which are kind of split for the rest of that pie. Um, let's see, and finally, numbers and reasons for children exiting out of care, so the opposite of the reason entering. Um, the good news is the vast majority go back with their parents. That also is part of our mission. That's our, our charge is to try to make families work. Um, and um, adoption is another a really important piece of that pie. Um, I've been talking to Bob that we've had some slow um, delays through the state. Uh, we've done our, we, our parts are really prescribed as far as um, when we have to get our paperwork in and how much time we have to keep these adoptions moving. It's a very high priority for us. And the language and statute is a little looser with the state. It's like when they can get to it. <laughs> and uh, that's that a problem, yeah. And, and right? it's heart-wrenching just because of, you can imagine, from the parent perspective, the child perspective of how painful that can be when somebody's just sitting waiting for this really good thing to happen. And so um, that one, we're gonna also put some pressure on and leverage that a bit. I mean, you'll see the breakdown of the rest of the reasons why kids exit. 42% um, of our children are placed with relative relatives. Um, in child protection, in these areas of placement, we are measured um, in a very detailed way. And we, we, if we don't make certain measurements, we're put on PIP plans right now. We're not on one, which is a really good thing about staff's performance. Um, but we do need to hit our timelines and relative care, um, putting that as a priority is one of the measurements that, and I certainly support that as do our staff, is we're first saying, can you stay with family? Mm -hmm. um, and that's the number one question. 42% of the time we're able to find that, which is really good. Um, sometimes families out of state, it takes a lot of coordination to get that to happen. And sometimes we can't locate them, which is another problem. And do you wait and hope you're gonna locate them? Or do you just move down a different road? <coughs> So those are, those are hard calls for staff and, and especially for Ann Roscott who runs our, our unit. That's what I have for today, mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, Commissioner. Wonderful. Thank you, Phil. Anybody have any other, other item even? Uh, just to follow up back to the mm -hmm. shortage of beds. I mean, that, that's a bricks and mortar issue or is it a management issue or I mean, how do, uh, statewide, how are they gonna deal with it? Right, so forevermore, the metaphor, and I mean, I first heard when I came from Bob and Dennis, but the pendulum swinging. So that, that's how I talk about these beds. And um, there was a time, and you guys have heard it, where things were institutionalized. You, you all, I think, know I have a son who has Down syndrome. Henry would have been born, shipped off to the state hospital. That's not that many years ago. That's like 60 years ago, <laughs> he would have been shipped off. Um, that's where he would have grown, grown up. And so things have changed dramatically from that place, the pendulum swing. Then we got to the point where the state put a high priority, which I agree with, of course, clinically, on saying if somebody's in a hospital level of care and doesn't need that level of care, we better get them out. So there's a huge push about that. The problem is you push them out and they still need help or they struggle and their condition or their presentation deteriorates and there's no bed available because we've just cleared out the beds and, and reduced our size and scope of what we have accessible in that acute, that most acute place. That's the current status is we've, we've taken a philosophy, um, Commissioner Brunder, where I think we've pushed it to the point where we've emptied out our hospitals and beds and it is a bricks and mortar um, answer, but you and I both know how long it would take to build new hospitals and new beds or having hospitals willingly say, I'm gonna trade med surge beds for, for you know, psychiatric beds. It's, it's not the easiest business to be in. And so there's business problems, there's bricks and mortar problems now. And I think the pendulum has just swung way too far so that we're, we're just hanging out there in desperation calls to other states, hoping we can find something. Yeah. So that's the saddest. I, what you're raising is my biggest heartache because we can't just fix it. And like legislatively, 
from an elected perspective, I would love to say, please send this message and let's get this done. Well, it probably is building more beds. I mean, I think that is what is going to be necessary. Then will staffing be an issue on top of that? Yeah, and the workforce. Oh, my goodness, yes. And that's already being talked yeah. about. And, it, and that's why some of these providers don't want to get in the business because you can't find the staff. So you could build the building, and they won't come. <laughs> you know, they won't fill it. You want the staff won't come. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, this, this workforce thing might be the, the root of it. Um, bricks and mortars are absolutely where we're at. We just don't have the beds. And repurposing would be the only quicker move. And I don't think people want to be in the business. So that that's kind of the status, and it's it's a so real tough dilemma. So you're trying then to talk about going to other states? Even? Oh, and we do, Commissioner. Okay. We really okay. have done that, um, especially with really hard to serve. Um, I look at Commissioner Strumberg is that um, if somebody has a developmental disability and behaviors, that's a really hard placement because they'll disrupt the <coughs> whole facility they're in. And so to find that perfect fit. We've gone to, yeah, Missouri, Iowa, wow. um, the Dakotas, for sure. Um, <coughs> and that's already happened. And we're grateful when we find that. We're so happy. And it costs a lot of money. Our budget is not in a great place. Um, but it also has mitigated the budget a little bit by the fact that we can't find these beds. So, you know, it's, it could be a lot more if we had to spend these high dollars in other areas. But one of the business problems is we can't even find the beds. So the costs are mitigated a little bit by that. So where does that person end up then? Mm -hmm. Well, it's really difficult because in that case that I was talking about with a parent, and this is the heart-wrenching part, is they're almost always with mom and dad still, and there's usually behaviors um, that also include physical harm, meaning that you know hitting and other things that are going on in the home that we know it's acute. We know they need a placement. They need a safe place. And so mom and dad have to put up with those things. In the mental health realm and the adult realm, which is just as bad, by the way, um, they sit in the ED. And so you can imagine that Mayo has something to say about that. Yes. They're, they're, and you guys know that we're trying to work on building some bridges and, and churn things and be creative. I mean, the other thing, like the crisis center, is just a godsend for us that we have such a thing because at least you could buy some time. So right. crisis center, ED, those are really our only choices. And, um, and then state hospital when we can. and. I, I would say, again, we have good relationships which do matter where you sometimes say, hey, we have this need, and boy, I'll tell you, Horizon as a provider will move people around in their system to try to make a bed for us when we ask. So I'm very grateful for that, but it's not, you know, the best, you know, to beg, borrow, and steal. Yeah, it's a tough road. So. Wow. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate your... Report. Well, thank you for your support, and I do pass that along. I know you guys do care about these issues and ask about them and, and share them. I think the most we can do is talk about it, and we've taken every advantage with DHS to try to state our case here that it's a crisis and we need help, and we'll do the same when ledge session mm -hmm. rolls around. Too, so. Do you feel like DHS has been receptive to what you're trying to say? They have. One of the hardest things, again, I was talking with Bob and, and Patty O'Connor about this yesterday, is that I think the attitude and the relationships are, are good in that way, but they're very short-term, meaning that, like I was at a meeting about um, case management redesign, and it's been going on for years, it's a big deal. Um, the whole team from DHS has turned over. When I went to this last meeting, not one person had been on this, and uh, the county's reps have been on for literally two or three years, working on this big like redesign mm -hmm. project. And so that's what we're facing would be my answer is that I think it's not an attitude or personality problem or a, a ph philosophical disconnect. Mm -hmm. It's much more that there's been so much change and churn in the department that we don't have sometimes that ability to call up some of the people we know and say, look, here's this conversation. I don't think they really even have that perspective that our board does about the degree of this problem. And so you start back where I think it's going to take a while before they really are like, oh, this is, like when you guys ask your questions and say, wait, wait, that's really bad. And it's like, yeah, it's really bad. Mm -hmm. And they don't know what really bad is because they're new. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. that, that's how I feel about some of that. And that goes all the way up to the <laughs> top leadership. What's that? Uh, yeah, all the way up to the Yeah, top. yeah, oh yeah, it's the assistant commissioner level <laughs> for sure, all the way okay. up to the yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you, Phil. Yep. All right. Mr. Chair, uh, first item under administration is the county board minutes for September 13th.
Move to approve. Move by Vance. Minutes. Second. Second. Okay. Minutes. Minutes. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Good. Carries in. All right. Next are the bills for the two weeks bills. indicated. Okay. And the I'll move the bills. I'll second them. I'll second them. Any I've got a. All right. I've got a couple construction stuff in here that right. I think people will be interesting to see what kind of money we're spending on construction. Uh, Hope Meyer Construction for six hundred and twenty-seven thousand. This is the first week. Um, that looks to be a bridge project. Okay. Right. You know what bridge? Or don't we? I don't off. I, I can't interpret this. Uh, they put their project number on here, but I'm not sure which All one right. it is. Oh. Math was construction for 723000 I'm thinking County Road 1, but... Uh, That is County Road 1. Okay. OMG Midwest uh, for 1,161,000. Overlays. Is that overlays? Probably. Yeah, probably, yeah. Uh, that is County Road 12. Oh. Okay. R&E Enterprises. Uh, one million six hundred and twenty three thousand. That is County Road 11. Okay. WW Black Topping for one hundred and ninety thousand. one I got City of Mankato construction projects 268,000 but then there's cons consultants and wavered services and stuff what's that um, County Road 60 so that's the county share of that to the um, City of Mankato and then we have some transportation and water fees. Uh, okay. Making up the rest of it. That's it. Thank you. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Anybody else? Okay. Hey. Motion. We got a motion and a second, right? I think we yep. do, don't we? Yep. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Right, uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, I have number 11 in your packet is the Human Resources Department agenda. Do have one action item uh, for the board's consideration today, and that is authorization to initiate recruitment for a social worker in our disability services area. This is the position that uh, was talked about at a recent work session uh, by Human Services to work in partnership with uh, Mayo Health Systems to do assessment work to um, help um, move people through the system, uh, get that assessment work uh, done to figure out services that someone that's been admitted to the hospital might need in order to uh, leave the hospital and return home or to another uh, rehab type of facility. I will tell the board that um, <clears throat> we've been um, having conversations with Mayo around a contract in order for them to pay uh, the portion of these positions that are not covered by reimbursements through state and federal sources. That contract is not complete at this time. 
although we do believe we'll be able to work through the remaining issues. So we're asking for authorization uh, at this point, but I would hold the requisition until we have um, confirmation that that contract has been fully vetted. Okay. So you st <coughs> still, we still need to move that. Uh, we would ask uh, for the board to authorize uh, recruitment so that when the contract portion is uh, <clears throat> complete, then we can move ahead quickly with the okay. recruitment. Is there a motion? I'll move approval right. for the disability services worker. And moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Julianne. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed carries. Under informational items, the first item there is a little bit unusual. Uh, it's a change of employment status from a full-time 911 telecommuter, telecommunicator um, to a temporary on-call position. Uh, this individual has left our employment or was planning to leave our employment but indicated a willingness to work some part-time on-call hours. And so um, <coughs> we decided uh, to move forward with this temporary position um, so that we have some extra capacity as we uh, do uh, further recruitments. We are a little short in our dispatch center and so that flexibility of this temporary on-call uh, was viewed uh, positively. We have begun initiation to recruit a new 911 telecommunicator so we're hoping to get back to full staff uh, soon. We had a completion of employment of a correctional officer and so we've initiated recruitment to refill that position. We also had a resignation of a clerical specialist too in our community corrections department and have initiated recruitment to refill that position. We had a resignation uh, in our facilities department, so we've initiated recruitment to refill uh, that position. And then we also had a resignation of a correctional officer in our jail, so we've initiated recruitment to refill that position. Then there is a promotion of an assistant county attorney two uh, to a, a county attorney division chief position, so we've initiated recruitment to refill that uh, assistant county attorney position. We have filled a library clerk a part-time position in the library as well as filling a property and environmental resources specialist position. Uh, we have hired an additional uh, correctional officer in the jail. We've uh, hired a social worker in our disability services area. We've also filled an assistant county attorney one position in the county attorney's office and then filled a clerical specialist one position in our human services area. So continues to be an active time for our human resources folks. Be happy to answer any questions that the board might have. Any questions or Bob? Okay. <coughs> All right. All right, uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, the item number 12 in your uh, packet is a resolution um, as required by Minnesota statute uh, certifying the proposed 2023 property tax levy. As the board is aware, uh, staff began working on the budget in April of this year. Uh, we've had meetings with department heads that were held in June, and then we've continued with work sessions with the county board uh, throughout the summer. Uh, resulting in a proposed levy of $42,979,178. This proposed levy is a 6% increase over the levy that was assessed in uh, 2022. We are seeing increased pressure on our labor markets. Um, we've also seen increased service demands leading to incre increased staffing needs as well as inflationary impacts that have uh, hit some of our operational cost areas. So all of those things have combined um, to uh, lead to that levy recommendation. So at this time, I'm recommending the 2023 proposed property tax levy of 42,979,178 
be certified to the Blue Earth County Finance Director. I would need to approve. Advance moves the proposed levy. Second. Second by Kip. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I don't have any questions or comments, but Bob already alluded to the time and energy that was put into coming up with this levy. I just want to mention that again of the work sessions that we had discussed this budget and setting this levy and hearing from the appraiser's office and Mark Manderfield and Michael bringing in projections on how this would affect other people or people in their homes. So I appreciate all that work that the staff put into it. I would just say that, yeah, in lieu of all the pressures and so forth, that, yeah, uh, and inflation and all, it's, uh, it's a, I forget what to say, it's a fair amount, but it's, uh, yeah, it be, it's necessary, so. Mm -hmm. All right, any further questions? I guess all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed carries. Uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, item number 13 is a resolution um, on the proposed 2023 budget. Uh, Minnesota Statute 375A.06 does require the county administrator to prepare and submit an annual budget and long range capital expenditure program to the county board. As I mentioned previously, staff have been working on this proposed budget since April of this year and has been uh, reviewed uh, numerous times in county board work sessions. As such, I'm recommending the approval of a resolution regarding the 2023 proposed budget, which projects expenditures at $119,648,583. I would also point out uh, that the public hearing to discuss the budget will be held on December 13th of this year at 6 p.m. here at the historic courthouse. Move to approve. And move by Kevin. Second. Second. Second by Vance. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed carries. Um, item number 14 in your packet then um, is a temporary liquor license. Uh, this is Locale Brewing uh, Company has uh, proposed this application for a one day uh, to four day temporary on sale liquor license. I believe it is a one day event on October 1st um, out at the uh, Poor Farm Studios. I will point out that uh, this application was received um, late in the process. We have no way of guaranteeing that the state of Minnesota will process this license in time, but we indicated to the applicant that we would bring it forward to the board and forward it on to the state in the hope that uh, it is received by uh, Saturday. Okay. I'll move it's approval. It's been moved by Kip. Is there a second? A second. Second by Julianne. Okay. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. I'll move forward. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed carries. Is that concludes your, your report and uh, we have the uh, commissioner report. So let's just go Julia all the way down. So go ahead. Yeah, uh, last Wednesday I uh, went to the Rita meeting, that's Regional Economic Development Alliance uh, with uh, Mankato, the greater Mankato area as well as surrounding counties. Um, and it was a review of what they've been going over the last year, a couple of years of their um, strategy has been um, less, same as, you know, attracting business, but also focusing on talent recruitment um, and making this a better place for people to move to out of the metro area and move to this area. So uh, it was very encouraging, um, and I think that they're seeing a lot of really positive benefits um, coming out of that alliance and I, I think it's a great that we're part of that and as someone who moved to the area a year ago I I see that that was um, I sat there and felt like wow you know I didn't even know that what was attracting me to this area was a strategy coming out of, of Rita so that's really encouraging 
That is the end of my report. Okay, thank you, Julianne. Great. Uh, yep. All right, Mr. Chair, after our last board meeting, uh, we had a conference call with Micah and we went through the agenda relatively quickly. Nothing really new to add, uh, getting schooled up for the election, and we will be meeting in person next month. We were supposed to do it last month, but something came up with some conferences, so we did it via Zoom, but next month we'll be in person. Then I had my South Central Workforce meeting. Everything's going pretty well there. Nothing really new to add. Obviously, like everyone else, they are having no problems trying to find jobs for people. Uh, MVAC meeting, we also had our full board meeting. Uh, nothing really new to report there. Activities are going very well. We, did, uh, we are getting audited for the program that Judd runs uh, because we gave away the money relatively quickly, but everything has been going really well with that. The auditors have been working with the staff and been able to answer all their questions. Uh, we had the work session, which we had several different items on the agenda and had a busy day that day. It was good to hear from all those people. And then I had my statewide emergency communication board. Um, nothing really new to report there. Things are moving along fairly well. And then this morning we had our new employee orientation. That's my report, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you, Kip. Well, let's go with Kevin. Okay, since the September 13th board meeting um, attended the AMC Fall Policy Conference on the 14th through the 17th, uh, had good uh, general sessions on tax assessment and the kind of an elections update. Uh, Blue Earth County was represented well by Michael Stahlberger, who was on the panel for that. He did a great job. We heard from uh, the Lieutenant Governor, Dr. Jensen, uh, his upcoming candidates. Their Environmental and Natural Resources Policy Committee met both in the afternoon um, and in the morning on the last day as we're moving through those processes. On the 19th of September, they had a call with the Army Corps of Engineers concerning the Rapidan Dam. The work session on the 11th, on the 22nd, we had a Lesseur, one watershed, one plan policy committee meeting. As we're moving through that process, uh, the group uh, committee decided to go with a, uh, a collaboration as we look towards um, administrator, fiscal agent at the next uh, meeting. In the afternoon in Mankato, I attended a, a kind of a, a town hall meeting on rural ambulances and some concerns with EMS uh, pre-hospital that was attended by uh, folks all over. Uh, just kind of as an example of how big a, a deal this is, the lady that uh, sat beside me is from Hoyt Lakes and traveled down oh, from wow. Hoyt Lakes to, to be part of that. Uh, that evening was the Blue Earth County Township Officers meeting. Probably the one thing to note from that meeting is they've changed their December meeting to December 1st which will be at 6.30 in Mapleton, so that is a, a date change uh, to December 1st. On the 23rd, uh, the Gaburba, Greater Blue Earth River Basin Authority Policy Committee had our, our meeting, and then on the 26th, the uh, Rural Minnesota Energy Board, we met um, for our, our quarterly meeting, and uh, with everybody else, uh, new employee orientation this morning. That concludes my report. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks. Well, I also was at the uh, AMC Ledge Conference, and uh, being on the uh, transportation, we had a lot of talks concerning uh, EV uh, vehicles and uh, how, how they will affect um, issues on the road and, and uh, money coming in because of gas uh, tax and stuff like that. Also. Um, the vehicle miles traveled, we talked a lot about those. Um, I was able to uh, squeeze in a uh, call to the NACO Rural Action Caucus while I was up there and uh, because that was their monthly call in. Uh, the next week uh, I also had the call with the Rapid Ann Dam with uh, Commissioner Papp and the Army Corps of Engineers.
and then uh, we had our work session on the 20th and I uh, flew off to Washington DC for the Transportation Alliance fly-in. Uh, we had meetings with uh, uh, Betty McCollum's office, Senator Smith's office, Representative Emmer's office, Representative Finstead, uh, and Senator Klobuchar's office. So we had, we had a busy day when we were there. Um, I also had a uh, meeting with uh, uh, the Transportation and Rural Action Caucus uh, person on, on Thursday in reference to uh, where we're going to hold the Rural Action Caucus Symposium uh, in 23 and uh, Blue Earth County is right up mm -hmm. there. So it's nothing's, nothing's set in wood yet and, or in stone and uh, things could change, but that's, that's, our, that's our goal at this time. Um, and I had my, uh, the new employees orientation this morning, so that's it for me. Okay, thanks Vance. Um, I go back then to <coughs> my report, All Seasons Arena on September 16th, a Friday. Yeah, we're uh, obviously in dis <laughs> discussions there. You might have seen some news on that. Um, um, I got a little uh, uh, dealing with um, uh, financing of our uh, uh, ice uh, and the upkeep of our All Seasons Arena. Uh, obviously, it's important to uh, skaters and the hockey hockey uh, groups. Um, so. Keep moving on that. Uh, yeah, just interesting. With uh, uh, I guess you see how a real joint powers agreement uh, yeah, comes along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a little glitches to it. I guess. Um, then we have. Uh, then we, have, <coughs> we did have the work session on Tuesday, the twentieth. Uh, Wednesday, I did go to the uh, Rita annual meeting in uh, that's usually in, at Gustavus and, and St. Peter and actually they had President Inch from the MSU gave a little talk there uh, then Thursday had the uh, even saw our county attorney at the senior expo I guess I glued myself in the senior ex senior group so that was um, good and that was at the community center or the right next door here and then uh, uh, had a Partners for Housing board meeting that evening, and we are, uh, with that, we are in the process of uh, finding a new uh, director for the board. Um, and so the last few days have actually been in uh, online, and uh, one in person, but mostly online, uh, a number of candidates, and Going through those and, and see what it went down to the, to the one candidate, um, and then uh, uh, let's see, um, we did have our yeah new employee orientation this morning, and then we had our, our board meeting. So that concludes my report. So if there's uh, uh, no other business. Move. I uh, move to recess. It moves to recess. Second. Second. Second by Kevin. Okay, all those in favor saying aye. 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 Carries. Recessed. Good job, Mr. Chair.